tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hi there, I hope everything's fine. We go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Preferences. Then right here in the middle are the settings. Change the working units from centimeters to meters and save this. Next time when you call up Maya, it will be back to the centimeter default. Now, with the mouse somewhere hovering over this window here, this part of the window, we press the key A in order to see all everything. And that's a good start because we will introduce a character and the characters are two, one or two meters high. That means we need working units of one meter in, rather than one centimeter. So that's what we're going to do next. Windows, General Editors, Content Browser. That's all the default contents in Maya here. Let's choose any of these characters which you find under animation and rigs. For example, Eric rigged. Eric lands in the scene and this is what he looks like. And when we click here, we load the textures which come with him and he stands in the typical stance pose as it's called. Now we go one section up here to the FBX files. These are motion capture files, not geometry. And we can choose look around, for example. He doesn't look around, but the skeleton inside him or behind him does that motion. And now we transplant the motion to him. This is how we're going to do it. Uh, we need the human IK, which is here. If you don't find it here, you need to go to rigging and skeleton and human IK. This invokes this view here. Currently, Eric, this character here, is controlled by the control rig, which allows us to animate him with keyframes. But we rather use the pull-down men menu and make him steered by the look around skeleton so he looks around now we need a plane and I choose a, a NURBS plane actually you can choose a polygon plane as well where he stands on now we need to go back to the attribute editor we need to click it here and here we have the make NURBS plane it's similar with the with the polygon world and I want the plane to be really big that's why I choose 70 for example and I introduce a few patches, same in the polygon world really. And now I don't need to see the grid. And so he's standing in the middle of a big field. Uh, this is the clipping here. The Maya viewport just doesn't want to calculate all the remote parts here. But uh, it doesn't matter here. When we render it, of course, we don't see a thing. And that's why I'm getting to what I really want to get to the lights. We have a sky dome light here and a physical sky. They're both more or less the same with the exception that the physical sky has options and parameters where we can simulate real morning evening atmospheres with even with the sun. So let's choose that. And the background goes black and now we render it and Maya, in this case, takes a few seconds to get all the scene details together because of the textures of this character here. If you have just a sphere, this goes much faster. You see this black line here, which is quite unpleasant. That's why I sometimes, when I only stick to this perspective here and I don't look to the other side, I rotate the sky dome slightly down. I show you this in the Arnold render view here. So I need to click here in order to invoke the viewport rendering of Arnold. 
Okay, now when you deselect the sky dome, you see exactly what I mean. This is uh, the shadow, so it's a, it's a real shadow. And even if I tilt the camera further down, I see this black line here. And that's what, that's what I wanted to say, really. Um, I can rotate this down like this, deselect it. And then I have a blue black background here. But when I turn around, I see the horizon coming up again. And that's something I really don't want. So let me undo this. So we're back to normal. Now when we select the sky dome light here, we have the sky dome light shape. That's uh, about the intensity and the resolution, etc. And here we have the AI physical sky where we can change things like the elevation, etc. When we render in the viewport, the selected objects are always depicted like this with a wireframe. We don't want to see that, so we select, in this case, the physical sky. So the actual geometry, so to say, is deselected. And now we can change the elevation. So the sunlight comes more from the top. And now it's a very flat sun with a very long shadow. We can change the azimuth, which is basically how the sun turns around. And now the question is, how do we get rid of this black thing? And I'll show you how to do this. When we go back to the viewport view here, viewport, we see that the physical sky is very small and it doesn't have an effect wherever we move it or however big or small we scale it. It's only critical about uh, the rotation and nothing else really. So we, when we move it over here and get a little bit closer to our gentleman and go back to the rendering. Actually, I since I have a graphics card here which supports ray tracing, I go to uh, the render settings and systems and change the rendered device from CPU to GPU. And now I go back to the Arnold viewport rendering. The GPU needs to collect all the data about the texture again, but only once. And keep in mind the physical sky is outside now, so he should be totally black, but he isn't. Maybe a little bit more intensity here. So it doesn't matter where this stands. It's always going to be the same rendering. But we wanted to actually concentrate on this surface here. So let's choose control vertices. And now I need to go back to the viewport in order to see all these CVs here. Well, I go to the top window, really. Press A, then I see everything. So select these, 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 these ones. And now I go back to this view here and I move them up. It's very simple, but imagine here I missed one, doesn't matter really. It's the graphics card which is rendering, which is basically the same as the CPU. Now you have this interesting effect because the sun is so low, it sees <laughs> the deformation of our environment here. But of course, we can go back to the sky dome light, choose the physical sky, and raise the elevation value. Again, I select this so I don't have to always look at the sky dome. Actually, it does do some looking around. We don't have to forget about this. And now you see that uh, everything is fine. We don't see the horizon because he's in a proper landscape. Even here. We have a tiny bit. This this one here, when we go too high. So we could raise this CV as, as well. But I think this is quite a nice view. We cannot stress enough how great it is to have such a rendering engine these days. It, it, it's not only Arnold. It's V-Ray and um, Renderman and all the others, really. So what we take away from this is the position and the scaling doesn't matter, but the rotation does. So when you rotate that dome, 
it is changing the lighting in the scene. The second thing we need to note is that in order to get rid of that horizon here, we don't have blue sky under the horizon really. Scale our landscape really big and translate the borders up. Let's render him how he looks around. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.